Hello there, it's Ranj again. So in my last video, I got a comment asking to go through this question here. There are multiple methods to go through it. There's one which is slightly quicker, but it's harder to understand. And there's another one which is slightly longer, but easier to understand. I'll go through both because as you know, I like to show a lot of different types of approaches. So we're told that an aircraft is to fly from 80 degrees north, 80 degrees east, to a position at 70 degrees north. We're not told the longitude. And it tells us that the Great Circle track is 270 degrees true when the aircraft is closest to the pole at 20 degrees east. Then it wants us to find the longitude at which the track measures 200 degrees true on a polystereographic chart. So, as you know, to start these questions, I like to draw out a diagram. Here we're going to draw the polystereographic chart here. We're told 80 degrees north and 70 degrees north. 80 degrees north would be closer to the pole, so I'm going to have another concentric circle there, which is going to be a bit smaller. And I'm just going to move it so it's in the middle there. Then I'm going to put a dot in the middle and then NP, just so I know it's the North Pole there. If you're confused about these two concentric circles, take a look at my last tuition video. Okay, now I'm going to label both the latitudes. We have 80 degrees north there, and 70 degrees north there. And if we're trying to imagine the countries, we can imagine that the Greenwich Meridian is actually over here. So the UK is going to be around here, the US would be around there, and Japan would be around there. As we know, Japan is in the east, so 80 degrees east will be just below 90, so it'll be about there. I'm actually going to draw a straight line all the way out to the more southern latitude there. Okay then, so what do I draw next? Well, that's pretty much all I can draw from this sort of statement. I know that from this position here, I'm going to somehow go and intersect this latitude over there. So then we look at the next statement here, which tells us that the Great Circle track is 270 degrees true when the aircraft is closest to the pole at 20 degrees east. So how do we actually use this fact that the aircraft is closest to the pole to sort of work out which way the aircraft is going? Well, if you're flying along in, let's say, this direction here, you see that we'll get to 20 degrees east there. However, we'll be closer about here. And if I was to draw that line on there, you would see that the angle is actually 90 degrees. So what we do is draw on a line here, which is 90 degrees. Well, 90 degrees when we hit the longitude, and then we carry it on past to the other side of the diagram there. Okay, cool. Well, there's one side here, which we always like to fill in, which is this last bit of the triangle there. And we know we're traveling in this direction. So now it's asking us what the longitude is where the track measures 200 degrees true. Well, let's take a look at how the track changes from our starting position to our ending position there. Well, if we look at all three of these lines that I've drawn on here, we know that north is always pointing towards the North Pole. So at 80 degrees east, our first track will be given by this angle here. And we can see that it's a lot bigger than 200 degrees. Well, the next track at 20 degrees east, we're actually told it, 270 over there. So you can see that when we go from 80 degrees east to 20 degrees east, our track has got smaller. And I'll carry on doing that until we reach 70 degrees north. So we want the longitude where the track measures 200 degrees true. Well, here's not a bad guess. And what we do is we don't take this as a scale drawing or anything like that. We will now define this longitude based on this track here. So let's say that this track here is 200 degrees true. And we just want to find out what longitude this is here. If this is 200 degrees true, that means this inner angle will be 20 degrees. 
and because we were told that this angle here is 270, we know that this one here is going to be 90 degrees. And from that we can do 180 minus 20 minus 90, or a quicker way is just do 90 minus 20 to get this one here, which is 70 degrees. And that's it. That was the key angle to find here, that's 70 degrees. Because as we know, to get from 80 to 20, we just have to subtract 60 degrees, which is this angle here. So to get from 20 to the longitude that we want to find out, we would have to subtract 70 degrees there. So let's do that. 20 degrees minus 70 degrees, well that gives us minus 50 degrees. What does that mean? Well, that just means that we've gone 50 degrees past the Greenwich Meridian, which is this line over here. And 50 degrees the other way is just 50 degrees west. So that's our answer. Okay, now for another way of doing this, which is where we don't really need to draw out this diagram, is to look at the DIID diagram. So I'm just going to draw that out up here. And because we're in the northern hemisphere and we're traveling westerly, we know that our track will be decreasing, just like how we mentioned it through the explanation of this. But I'm just going through it in a different way as if we haven't drawn this. So from this DIID diagram, we know that the track is decreasing. And then we just bring in another equation that you should remember for your exams to do with polystereographic charts, is that the chart convergency is equal to the change in longitude for a polystereographic chart. This only works for a polystereographic chart. The reason is, is because the full equation is the change in longitude multiplied by the sign of the parallel of origin. But that sign of parallel of origin is sine 90 degrees, and if you put that in your calculator, it's just one. In my first video, I explained this equation and the diagram in a lot more detail, so take a look at that if you're a bit unsure about this. So we're told that our track's going to be decreasing, and there's something to do with chart convergency and change in longitude. But how does this all link together? How does that give us the longitude? Well, we need to use this change in longitude here, because when we find that, we can use where we start from, for example, 80 degrees east or 20 degrees east, and then we can add or subtract this chart convergency to then get where we will end up at. And what this chart convergency is, that's how much our track is going to change. And we're told that, because from 270 degrees true to 200 degrees true, the difference is 70. So therefore 70 is our chart convergency and it's also our change in longitude. And this is where our starting position here is 20 degrees east, so over here. So that tells us that because our track changes by 70 degrees, we must also be going 70 degrees in a change of longitude, which is also shown by that angle that we previously drew there. And that would lead us to start at 20 degrees east to then subtract our chart convergency of 70 degrees to then get to our final answer of 50 degrees west again. I hope that clears things up for you. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more things like this, please like and share the video with your buddies and the communities you are within. I want to spend more time doing things like this so I can release more videos and improve the quality of my content, but can only do that with your help. Thanks again and see you soon.